Hello, this is a Sila 114 upright piano. It's actually measured 117 centimetres at all. I'll talk about that a bit more later on. Uh, extremely well made piano and uh, made in 1992. There are several features on this piano that lift it above the ordinary. Uh, you can see actually the trimming at the top there. Um, it's not just the, it, it's not mainly the case what we're interested in, it's the quality of the piano. The first thing I want to say is the legroom here is a massive 69.5 centimetres. Uh, the normal is 61, the Yamaha U1 next to it is just under 61 centimetres uh, legroom. So uh, this would be suitable for extremely tall people. Now having said that, the pedal height for me is too high. It's uh, about almost 8 centimetres from the floor. A normal, well Beckstein's really tremendous, Beckstein Grand's about 5 centimetres. 6 would be okay, 7 getting a bit high. 8 is really too high. So what I would do, if this was my piano I think, is actually, because uh, the, the problem with it being too high here is your feet's an, foot's an angle, though for a very tall person that might not be a problem. But these caster, casters, are, a lot of modern pianos don't have casters on. These are obviously nice quality ones, but I would take those off. That will give us 3 centimetres extra and bring it down from, uh, from 8 to 5, which would be excellent. So taking 3 centimetres off the legroom, we're still going to have 66, which is one of the greatest legrooms on any upright piano. So when we're talking about the piano being a 114, 114 centimetres from the floor, that's exactly what it would be if we took the caster, casters off and brought the pedals down. Now the action's a technician's dream really, it's a top quality runner action and the way that the Sider have regulated it very very finely um, is testament to their, to their extreme fastidiousness really. The action and the weight um, when you play it, it's really suitable for a, a pianist to practice. It's, it's uh, not on the heavy side, but it, 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 just, it just feels right all the way through. Um, a a well-constructed action um, is not just a question of the down weight, it's how, how, you, how the friction is when you, as you play through, and it's just perfect, really. So, um, just uh, will be great, even for, even for practicing if you're going to play on a grand at concerts. It, it has almost a grand touch to it. Of course, it's not as good as a grand. It doesn't have the same control as a grand would with the, the repetition lever, but it, it, is, it is as good as you can get for an upright. Um, I like the way that the Celeste rail has been put in as well. It's one of the easiest to get out for a piano tuner. Um, easier than the Yamaha, for instance, where you've got to undo a wing nut. These, these bits just pull out. Um, very, very good mechanism. Because Sila is one of the oldest piano manufacturing companies in the world, and um, that's almost the same logo as they originally had, a bit more colourful than the old days. Um, but uh, the, 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 the quality piano that the depth of knowledge in the staff of Sila uh, is, is apparent when you see how well they put the piano together. One thing I couldn't find here is the serial number. thought it wasn't anywhere around and then managed to find it tucked away down there. So um, you can't even see it on the video, I'm sorry. It's actually down here on the soundboard, which you can have to see live in order to, to find it. A lot of top policy upright pianos have this lid prop uh, which flicks up like that in this case and um, which means you can have the lid of the piano open slightly. That gives you a lot more volume coming out if you, if you want the more volume. You can still play quietly obviously but gives you more dynamic range therefore. It's a very nice long music desk as well which you tend to get in really high quality pianos. I nearly forgot to mention that the pianos had almost no wear at all. Not really been used since it was uh, bought. Uh, you can't see any indentation on the hammers at all here. Uh, so uh, although the piano is made in 1990, it's like buying a new piano. Uh, the only difference between this and buying a new piano is that possibly the bass is slightly richer on a, on a brand new bass string. But if we listen to these bass strings, you really can't get much richer than that. It's as warm as you can get really and um, as full a sound as, as you can expect from a piano. Listen to the break point there, how wonderful it's disguised. You can hardly tell the difference there between... You will on, on cheaply made pianos or less expensively made pianos, you'll notice the big difference as the steel string moves towards the copper strings. But really, they're so well blended, and here, Again, so well blended on the break point. You've got to be very, very knowledgeable, a very capable manufacturer to be able to get that. 
So that's a Silent Upright Piano, 114 centimetres high, made in about 1990 and really hardly used since then. The quality of the piano is outstanding. Um, I'm really impressed by it. Touch, ideal for study because it's a firm touch, but a touch that um, right through the touch you feel resistance, which is what you should do on a high quality piano. Has a bright, clear sound and a mellow sound if you play gently. Very well voiced hammers. And is powerful in the bass. Uh, the fact that the piano is over 30 years old doesn't really mean that the bass is any deficient at all. You wouldn't notice the difference really between this and a new piano. And the, the whole piano itself is just as good as a new piano. Thank you very much for listening.